Hello everyone, here I welcome you all to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. Today we will be learning about Apache Uzi. In this Uzi tutorial, we shall learn the following. First up, what is Apache Uzi? In this, we will have a brief introduction about Apache Uzi, why is it so important, and what is its functionality. Then, we shall move ahead and understand the types of jobs in Apache Uzi, and followed by that, we shall go through a simple and easiest way of installing Apache Uzi onto the local system. After installing Apache Uzi into the local system, we shall go through the different editors present in Apache Uzi. And lastly, we shall wind up the session by understanding the various advantages of Apache Uzi. So, our first topic, what is Apache Uzi? Answer, well, Apache Uzi can be defined as a job scheduler system designed and deployed to manage and run Hadoop jobs in a distributed storage environment. It allows users to combine multiple complex jobs to be run in a sequential order to achieve a higher order job to be finished. The reason behind using Uzi along with Hadoop framework is its capability to strongly bind and integrate itself with Hadoop jobs like Hive, Scala, Apache Pig, and many more. Uzi is an open source Java web application available under Apache License 2.0. It is responsible for triggering workflow actions, which in turn uses Hadoop execution engine to actually execute the task. Hence, Uzi is able to leverage the existing Hadoop machinery designed for many tasks such as load balancing, system failover, and many more. Now that we have a brief understanding of Apache Uzi, let us move ahead and understand the major job types that Apache Uzi can practically perform. Apache Uzi Jobs The reason for choosing Apache Uzi for Hadoop jobs is its way of executing its jobs. Apache Uzi is capable to detect the completion of tasks through callback and polling. When Uzi starts a task, it provides a unique callback HTTP URL to task and notifies the URL when the task is completed. If the task fails to invoke the callback URL, then Uzi can poll the task for completion. There are three main types of jobs in Uzi. They are Uzi workflow jobs, Uzi coordinator jobs, Uzi bundles. Firstly, Uzi workflow jobs. These are directed acyclic graphs or DAGs, which specifies a sequence of actions to be executed. Next, Uzi coordinator jobs consist of the workflow jobs triggered by the time and data availability. And lastly, the bundles. These can be referred to as a package of multiple coordinators and workflow jobs. Now let us understand all these jobs in a little detailed way, one by one. Firstly, we shall understand Apache Uzi's workflow. A sample workflow with controls such as start, decision, fork, join and end, and actions like Apache Hive, Shell, Apache Pig will look like the following diagram. Uzi workflow is nothing but a sequence of actions that can be carried out and represented in the form of DAGs or directed acyclic graphs. The actions will be carried out in a sequence, which means the output of the previous action will be the input for the present action. And the output for the present action will be the input for the next upcoming action. Let us understand this in a bit more detail. In a flow of different sequential tasks, some tasks can be performed in parallel. To execute some tasks in parallel, we can use the fork option in Uzi. The join option is used to merge two parallel tasks into one. Let us discuss with this diagram as shown down below. You can see the starting phase is the start and the last phase is the end. In between, we have map reduce job, fake job and fork and join. So here, out of multiple jobs such as hive, shell, pig, mr, we are using map reduce job and pig job. After starting the job, the workflow will enter the map reduce job first. After executing the map reduce job, a result will be generated or an output will be generated, which will act as an input for the next upcoming pig job. And inside the pig job, the task get executed and the output will be forwarded to folk. Here, two other jobs are existing, which are map reduce job and a hive job. As said earlier, 
fork is used to execute two different tasks in parallel to save time. So here the output from the pick job is forwarded to two different jobs that is the MapReduce job and the Hive job using fork. And after that the output will be generated from both the jobs that is the MapReduce job and the Hive job and these two outputs will be joined together using the join method. And after that the entire output or the final output will be thrown out. And that is the end of the execution of OZ workflow. So this is how the OZ workflow works in real time. So here the different components used in this particular job are start, map reduce job, pick job, fork, join, hive job, and finally the end. Next are the nodes in the OZ workflow. There are mainly three control flow nodes in OZ workflow. They are start, end, and kill nodes. As you can see in the above diagram, we have start node in the first and end node in the last position. In between, we have a MapReduce program which is based on word count. If this particular MapReduce job encounters an error, then the job will be terminated using the kill option or the kill node. In case, if the MapReduce job is successful, then the control will flow into the next node which is the end node. Next, we deal with the coordinators. You can schedule complex workflows as well as workflows that are scheduled regularly using a coordinator. OZ coordinators trigger the workflow jobs based on time, data, or even predictions. The workflows inside the job coordinator start when the given condition is satisfied. Definitions required for the coordinator jobs are start, end, time zone, frequency, and some more properties that are available in control flow information. Firstly, the start. Start says about the date and time which is related to the particular job assigned. Next is the end. The end defines the date and time for the particular job assigned. Followed by that, we have the time zone. Time zone represents the time zone of a coordinator application based on the particular location where the program is being executed. Followed by that, we have the frequency. Frequency says about the information of the number of minutes consumed while executing the job. Now, Apart from that, we have a few more which are like time out. The maximum time in minutes for which an action will wait or satisfy the additional conditions before getting discarded. The zero indicates that all the input events are satisfied at the time of action. Materialization, the action should be timed out immediately. One indicates no time out. The action will wait forever. The default value will always be one. Next is the concurrency. The maximum number of actions for a job that can run parallelly. The default value is always 1. Followed by that, we have the execution. The execution specifies the execution order if multiple instances of the coordinator job have to be satisfied with their execution criteria. That can be FIFO by default, which is first in, first out, or LIFO, which can be last in, first out. Finally, the last only. The command for the coordinator jobs to be executed is shown in the slide below. So followed by the command, if a configuration property used in the definition is not provided with the job configuration while submitting the coordinator job, the job submission will fail. So now with this we finish off the coordinator jobs. Followed by coordinator jobs, we have the OZ bundle. OZ bundle system allows you to define and execute a set of coordinator applications, often called as a data pipeline. In OZ bundle, there is no explicit dependency among the coordinator applications. However, you could use the data dependency of coordinator applications to create an implicit data application pipeline. You can start, stop, suspend, resume, rerun the bundle. It gives a better and easy operation control. The most important term we need to understand about OZ bundle is its kick off time. The kickoff time is the time when the bundle should start and submit coordinator applications. Advancing in this Apache OZ tutorial, we shall understand how to install Apache OZ. Now to install Apache OZ, there are multiple ways. In CentOS, we need to install Cloudera, then download OZ, download external J support for OZ, download Maven setup, and then set up MySQL database. And after that, we need to configure the setting and this seems very complex, right? No worries. In this tutorial, we shall learn the simplest way of installing OZ and then later we can try to learn the complex ways. So firstly, all we need is an Oracle virtual box.
So just Google Oracle Virtual Box for Windows and you will be redirected into a new web page where you can choose Oracle VM Virtual Box Downloads Oracle Technology, which is the first link in the description. You can go ahead and click the latest version for Windows. So by clicking on the Windows Installer button, you'll get your Oracle Virtual Box basic packages installed into your local system. You can see the virtual box is getting downloaded. Followed by that, open a new tab and Google Cloudera. So you can see that we have Googled Cloudera download for virtual box. So that will redirect you into a new web page and the first link, which is download quick start for CDH 5.13 cloud era. Clicking on this link, you will be redirected into a new web page. And in this, you need to select a platform. So here we shall select VirtualBox. And now just click on get it now. And here you need to provide your details. Why are you using this product, which is for learning or anything else? And followed by that, you need to provide your name, last name, business email ID, the company which you're working, or you can ignore if you're a student. After that, your job title, and you can ignore this if you're a student. Then your official phone number, then accept all the above. That private data policies, and if you would like to prefer someone to use Cloudera, then press continue and your virtual box will be downloaded. I have already downloaded a quick start CDH 5.13 in my local system, so I would prefer to ignore this. Now that we have successfully downloaded our Cloudera CDH and virtual box required, we shall run them and install into our local system. You can see that the Oracle VM VirtualBox setup is started now. You can select next, followed by that, just select next again. And here you're provided with different options, whether to create a shortcut menu on your desktop or not. I would prefer not. Then just select next, then yes. And the last button will be install. So I have already installed Oracle VirtualBox 6.4 version into my local system. To save time, we shall cancel this, but you have to select install button to install your VirtualBox system. So once after the VirtualBox is installed into your system, it will be looking something like this. So here you need to select the option import and you will be provided with a new dialog box. And in here, you need to select the browse button over here. So once you select the browse button, you will be redirected into your local file system. So you have to know the location where your quick start cloud era has been downloaded. So I have saved uh, my quick start cloud era ISO file in this particular file. So I need to select my quick start VM, then just select open. And for the safer side in the configuration, we shall select the RAM size above 8 GB. So I'll just specify randomly as 9000 MB, which is just above 8 GB. And now just import. You can see the importing appliance has started. So your Cloudera will be imported as soon as possible. So you can see that the Cloudera Quick Start VM has been successfully imported onto the virtual box. Now let's quickly start it by double clicking it or also you can just select start. Now you can see that quick start VM has been successfully started and it's loading. You can see the cloud array is getting booted up. So there you go. The quick start cloud era VM has been successfully booted up. Now the best part about cloud era is it's got everything you need. The Uzi, Hive, Hue, Spark, HBase, Impala, everything for a beginner to start with. Now what we need is Uzi. So we need to start up our Hue and Uzi first. Let's open Uzi in a new tab.
and finally let us also start here so this is how the web page of hue looks like or the editor of hue looks like and also this is the web page or web console of Uzi. So here you can have workflow jobs, coordinator jobs, which I mentioned in the previous explanation, and also the bundle jobs, SLA, system info, instrumentation, metrics, and all the extra additional settings you require. Now we shall discuss about the editors present in Hue. So to find out the editors in Hue, you need to select the button query, and inside that, you'll be getting a drop down menu, and inside the menu, Select editor and you can see there are various editors present in Hue that are Impala, Hivejob, Pegjob, Java Code, Sparkjob, MapReduce, Shell, Scoop, and many more. So now that we have understood how to install OZ into local system and the editors present in Hue and the OZ web console, we shall advance ahead and understand the advantages of OZ. The first among the advantages of OZ is Uzi is scalable and reliable to monitor jobs in Hadoop cluster. Uzi supports various jobs in Hadoop ecosystem like MapReduce, Pig, Hive, Streaming, and also Java based applications. Uzi has an extensible architecture that supports great programming paradigms. The next advantage is complex workflow action and dependencies. Uzi workflow comprises of actions and dependencies among them. Followed by complex workflow action dependencies, we have reduced the time to market system. The directed acyclic graph specification enables users to specify the workflow. So this saves a lot of time to market. Followed by TTM, we have frequency execution. Users can specify execution frequency and can wait for data arrival to trigger an action on the workflow. Followed by frequency execution, we have native Hadoop stack integration. Uzi supports all type of jobs such as Spark, Hive, Pig, and many more. Uzi is validated against Hadoop stack and Uzi is integrated with Yahoo distribution of Hadoop with security and is a primary mechanism to manage a variety of complex data analysis. So with this, we come to an end of this tutorial. Thank you and wish you all a very happy learning.